Greetings to you all, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, and welcome to our another live session where we are going to talk about the events which are actually taking place, and we'll be looking to the uh, message of warnings given to us through the prophetess of, of God. So today, I would like to say that in this wonderful moment of time, please, I'm kindly um, inviting you all, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, to please bring your Bibles and the Spirit of Prophets books, and we are going to look into one of the most um, quotations which many people, they usually read. So we're going to break it down and look into every point which Sister White is stated in the time when she was given a vision to the things which are going to occur in our time. So I believe that we are living in the time of the end. And uh, you and I, we have to make sure that we read and understand. And we ask God in prayer to ask him to grant us another supply for his Holy Spirit. So at this point of time, I'm so thankful for you to join us today. May the Almighty God bless you with the abundance of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So without wasting of your time, let us look into the uh, quotation by Sister White where she warned us about the new organization that were to be established. So we're going to look into the book um, by Sister White and this quotation is uh, found in the book's um, selected message page 204 and page 205, volume 1 of Selected Message. So she said right here in the book, a Selected Message, volume 1, page 204 and 205. Now, it reads as follows. The enemy of souls is sought to bring in the superstition that a great reformation was to take place among Seventh-day Adventists, and that uh, this reformation would consist in giving up the doctrines which stand as the pillars of our faith and in engaging in a process of reorganization where this reformation to take place what would be the result the principles of truth that god in his wisdom has given to the remnant church would be discarded our religion would be changed the fundamental principles that have sustained the work for the past 50 years, but I will say that um, as now in our time, then it's almost 100 and something years, 107 years. So, all right, fine. So the fundamental principles that have sustained the work for the past 50 years would be changed, will be counted as error, a new organization will be established. Books of a new order would be written. A system of intellectual philosophy would be introduced. The founders of this would go into the cities and do wonderful work. The Sabbath, of course, would be lightly regarded also. God and also God, as God also created it. Nothing will be allowed to stand in the way of the new movement. And the leaders would, would teach that virtue is better than vice. But God being removed, they would place their dependence on human power, which without God is worthless. Their foundation would be built, built on the sand, and storm and tempest would swept away the, the structure. So, now, uh, this is from the book by uh, Ellen White, and um, I am very sure that all of all of us then we are very familiar with this quotation. So now we are going to break it down as we are um, going to to look to each elements of this uh, prophecy. So the first point we are going to look to the um, fundamental principles of truth that uh, discarded as. And also our religion to be changed. Now, so it says we are here now. Um, on the point number one, we are we know very well that uh, we are living in the periods of the end times, and there are a lot of things which 
many people they are not aware of, especially the people who are uh, they joined this movement recently, and um, because the general conference is actually um, hiding the true history, so many people they might not even aware, and also the fact that they are not teaching the truth in, on the pulpits in, in your local churches, and uh, I would say this that. All the pastors have been trained to use uh, what we call neuro um, linguistic programming. What, what, what do I mean by that? They're actually trained to make people to uh, not to see the light using their uh, smooth language. So, which will cause their, their listeners not to question them on the new ideas which they have. Now, the general conference is busy removing the three angels' message, attack, attacking the pillars of our faith. This is the point number one. And you need to note that. And now we're going to move to point number two. So this is the only quotation that we're going to break down. And I, I think we have made so many points. And we are going to look to each point, element of this prophecy. Now, point number two. It speaks of our... Uh, fundamental principles and, and and truth that have sustained our our movement for the past 50 years okay by that time when sister was given this message it was 50 years so if we are to calculate from 1863 up to our time there are actually uh almost 100 and, and um 170 something years so far but from the time when eleanor died from uh 1915 to our time where we are it is 107 years from her death time so once uh they the from the death of ellen white and all the pioneers there have been so many changes within this movement and i'll say that the fundamental principles that have sustained uh, our religion for the past years are now actually discarded as what is error so again, this is the conference, the general conference, which many of us are looking up to today, changing our religion to that of the world. So then now, which is why you're finding that we we have actually pastors who be busy preaching uh, the smooth messages on the pulpits, the message that we, um, we produce, no conviction of sin. And now we're having many people, many members are joining this movement, unconverted members are joining this movement so let's get a little bit closer number point number three a new organization would be established a new organization would be established so god is in is in an organization since the beginning of of the of time and a new organization has been started by men and it has been uh, used uh, made up of truth mixed with error this new organization that we have today, it is a new organization. It is not the same as the new, as God's organization that he himself organized during the time, the beginning of time. So now we are having uh, this new organization from the time when our, when the, all the, 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 the pioneers, or I should call them the recipients, because Ellen White is not the founder of the Seventh day Adventist movement. She is not. James White is not the founder of the Seventh day Adventist movement. The real founder of the Advent movement, it is the mighty angel coming down in the Revelation chapter 10. So Ellen White, James White, Joseph Bates, and all other, these are the recipients. They were good in paying attention to the founder, the real founder. He that shall come, we will come and to notary. He will come to his own church. Is Jesus Christ, the mighty angel, coming down. That's the founder. Now, point number four. We're going to look up to the point number four of this quotation. Now it says, books of new order would be written. Now, if you walk into the Adventist book center over the world, you will see uh, the error sold within. And the books which have been promoted by the general conference. If I had to remind you, when time, when uh, Ted Wilson, when he first actually, when he was at uh, the Adventist general conference, 
He was busy promoting the book like the Gage controversy. But as time goes by, then he had to change. Then he introduced another little book. There is another little book in the name The Great Hope. Many people, they are not even aware that The Great Hope is the book that has replaced The Great Controversy. The man of sin, which is the papacy, and the Pope himself, you actually know that the book, The Great Controversy, it contains the solid truth that will identify who the Antichrist of the Bible is. But then, because Ted Russon, they've signed a document on, of, on agreements on, on not to publish, not to preach the three angels' message, not to identify the man of sin as the purpose himself. What happened? Because they don't want to break this off out of the vows which they've agreed with the papacy. So they know that if they will do that, since, okay, I'll say this uh, to many of you who've been following to all my, my pages. I, re I even remember there's a time when I even posted an, an, a presentation that was actually even showing what happened in, on, on 1999. Many people, they aren't even aware that the papacy is actually involved in the works of the general conference and all the meetings and even our health message itself yes you've been told that okay fine uh this is the health message uh the hospitals and it's run by the general conference you have been lied to your hospitals yes they are in the name the seventh day adventist but the man who is running your hospitals it is the papacy roman catholic church but because many of you, then you don't want the truth to be told. You just going to follow your pastors, your leaders, and you remain blind. So what I'll say is this: Adventist new, the new theology, which is the era of deadly heresies, and books of New World Order are promoted today within your your uh, so-called general conference and all these local churches and your. Pastors are feeding you these lines. They are pumping all their lies in your head every day. Sabbath in and Sabbath out. And recently, this past Sabbath, look to that Sabbath school lesson. What were they talking about? The sonship of Christ. Just imagine, they are denying the sonship of Christ. He is the son of God. And now they're busy pumping into your head the lies from the pits of Babylon. Because they are drinking, your general conference leader and all these pastors, they are drinking from the founding of Catholicism. And you, just because you don't want to, the truth to be spoken about, you just want to sit right there in the comfort zone because you are happy being a member. Every some of the in and some of the out, you go there and you pay your tithe and your offerings to support and to help to build the towers of Babel. And very soon, very soon, your structure it is going to be swept away. And those who are drinking from the fountain of Catholicism, they are going to be striking by what God is going to pour his wrath without mixture on these people who are in Babylon. So let's look to the point number five. A system of intellectual philosophy would be introduced. Oh. Think about that for a moment. A system of, of what? Uh, of a philosophy, intellectual philosophy would be introduced. Now, let me ask you for a moment. What happened? What was the meeting in the 18, uh, 1980? Dallas, Texas was all about. Because, you know, like, you know, we're we having, like, the pastors, they've gone to the Adventist schools to study theology. And they've been pumped the, the lies every, every day, reading books of, of the world. And then you've been pumped the lies. Then, you come to us, you want to pump your lies again into our heads. No, 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 no. Look, I want to say this, and please, I want you to listen very carefully. If a religion is forcing people to believe on lies, then this is now where we're talking about the colonialism. Because the colonizers, they come with their lies, and then they colonize us. They remove our culture. They take away all our histories. And even now, some of us, we, you know, we, we don't even know the history. Where you are coming from? <laughs> Look, I'll say this. 
your religions. The reason why they are forcing you to believe on, on, on intellectual philosophy. A God that is made up of, uh, of three beings, which are not three but a one, or a one in three persons. That is a philosophy because it is not found in the Bible. Read your Bible. You cannot find the Trinity in the Bible. But it is made up. It is assumption. So, you, you, many, many of you today, you are pastors. Yes, you are pastoring big churches in your land. But you are busy pumping your lies. A, 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 a God that is made up of a philosophy. Three trinitized persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Where in the Bible can you find such such a horrible, horrible statement? Where in the Bible? You go ahead and you trying to, to speak and you quote First John 7, uh, verse 7 and 8 to say, oh, oh no, this verse talk about the... If you want to be true to the biblical text, read that text. The first thing that you have to do is to remove your Trinitarian glasses. Then you open the Bible. You read it with the teachable heart spirit. God will speak to you through his spirit. And you see what that text means. Yes, it says the three are one. But does that say they are a trinity? You go and quote Matthew 28, 19. Does that verse say that they are a trinity? To baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Does that mean that these are, 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 are actually three beings? Because God is actually present right now to us through his son's spirit that he gave to his son. Galatians 4 verse 6. Now that you are the sons of God, he has sent the spirit of his, of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. On John 20, Christ, he breathed his own spirit to the disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. So, you want to try to, to make up a philosophy to confuse the people, to make sinners out of the saints. I will say this. Bible is very clear. You shall know them by their fruits. The truth seekers, I would like to say to you, the truth is made plain on the tablets. It is up to you to whether you want to see the truth or to remain blind and confused. And I will, share, I will say this again. God is going to send the delusions upon the mind of the people who are not willing to search the scriptures as a hidden manner. So the general conference now, we will, we will take the SOP or the Bible and totally misinterpret the God, uh, God's message through beautiful and sophisticated manipulation of English language to promote their new theology. Which you call neuro, neuro linguistic mind programming. They use this language to actually to manipulate your language, to manipulate your, you so that you won't able to understand what the Bible says. They say so they say, no, the God it is it's a mystery. You can't understand it. So many people now they, you know, you know, God, God is a are you for real? Let's look to the point number six. The founders of this uh, new system would go into the cities and do wonderful work of evangelism. Wow. My brother and my sisters, I think uh, two weeks ago, I made a post where I said that the Trinitarians, they'll go to the cities to do evangelism. They'll go there and preach the message using their neuro-linguistic mind-programming language. Manipulating the, the Bible to misinterpret it by the way of smoothly sophisticated English, and then they tell you the lies. And we are now having so many people joining this movement, unconverted people. They will join this movement, and they have joined because they are not actually much connected about your souls, they want the number. You must know that it is all about their paychecks. So if they have this uh, number of the people whom they are going to baptize after the, the, the end of the, the, the evangelism work, they have this number. So they, they, they bring the number and also the check. Paycheck time. I understand that. It is paycheck time. Hmm. Missionaries who preach for a salary. You see, God is not looking for, for the qualified. He qualifies the cold. 
himself. That's why Christ, he never wasted his time to go to those people, the, 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 the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were educated. He got the features of the fish. Then he make features out of features of men out of those people whom the world were looking down upon. So God used the the the, the foolishness to confound the wise. So you must understand this. The reason why God is using the 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 unqualified preachers, it is because you know and understand that these people they are teachable. And they are faithful in their service unto God. Let's look to the point. Uh, all right. So before I look to the point number six, uh, point number seven, I would like to say this again. So uh, evangelism through celebration is bringing in partially unconverted new members. Or big sliders, which on the surface appears to be wonderful work. Like I said, this has been done. So you need to check and examine. Right now, let's look to point number seven. To stand in the way, nothing would be allowed to stand in the way of this new movement. Wow. Nothing would be allowed to stand. So anyone standing up against the error of jumping the general conference and the local churches will be silenced through uh, church offices being removed or disfellowshipped. So today, if you can just stand up against the general conference's errors and all their doctrines which they are approaching today, You'll be silenced by the removal of your what? Your membership, which is disfellowshipped. They will take you out of your religions because you don't trust in the word. So this is what you need to do today. So now I want us to look to, to this because there are so many people today who are actually being disfellowshipped and many people, they go out there with um, contract spirit. Now they are actually... Go out there with the bitter spirit, you know, because they actually saying that uh, now we have so much problems and uh, we uh, need the help. Uh, because they go around there and ask many people to say, why is it that these people, they do this? Why is that they, they, they disfellowship us? So I like to say that my, my brother and my sisters, when they remove you out of your religions, out of them, you need to know that God to actually invite you and connect you with the people who are actually on the truth of God's word. Be faithful unto him until to the very end. Christ himself was removed. The disciples themselves, they were chased and removed. You must learn from the past history to all the events, all the things that happens in the old times. They are there for us, in order for us to learn. So let us look to the point number, point number, another point number eight. Point number eight. So the leaders will teach that virtue is better than vice. So that for a moment. So they say that virtue is better than vice. So we want to look to that part, that part for a moment. So now, now the lip service is going is, is given to the truth by the general conference. They say that they are giving the three angels message to the world when they are not. They say our hospitals are now fulfilling uh, our health messages as the Adventists where they are doing that. So they say our schools are based on the advice given by God as prophetess through Ellen White when in reality they are not. Number one, point number one. The lip service Look to Teddy Wilson today. They say that no, they are busy preparing to uh, to preach the three angels' messages, and for your own good, the first angels' message it is actually pointing to the worship of one true God of the Bible. Fear God. You need to notice one thing: the difference between the plural and the singular. In the first angels' message, it says, "Fear God." 
not gods. So you need to underline that. Fear God and keep his commandment. Worship him who has made the heaven and the earth. So it says worship him, not them. So this is the difference. Because I know that some of our, our members out there, they'll be saying that uh, we are actually denying the, uh, the, 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 the truth of God's word. We don't believe in the, in, the, in the Holy Spirit. We do believe in the Holy Spirit. We do believe in the Son. And we do believe in the Father. But the way how we understand the Bible, it is different to what the Trinitarians uh, do. They actually twist the word of God using their misinterpretation, manipulation. So as to make or uh, cause the mind of the of the listeners to be confused. So which is why you need as well to uh, to understand that. So let us look to the point number uh, number nine, where it is also state about them. Uh, they would place their dependence on what on the human powers. So they will place the and the dependence on human powers now. Uh, so the general conference is actually um, the actually I'll say the 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 uh, attendance of actually making the the all the members all the people like now today they are actually looking up to the general conference then they, they they depend on their power. There are so many people out there. Whenever you try to stand up and speak the truth of God's word. And uh, you also point out all the, the, the abominations which have been done, which we, uh, we all understand that in the book of, of, of Ezekiel chapter 8 and 9, it speaks of the, of the abomination which have been done by the leaders of the church. And there is now a terrible destruction that is going to occur. And all the leaders of this Israel are going to be slaughtered because of their disobedience. Because of all the abominations. Read the book of Ezekiel chapter 8 and 9. And understand what these leaders are doing in their secret places. Now you see men like to do some collapsing hands with the papacy. And then you say it is okay. And then some of you say no. Uh, it is fine. We don't have to speak the truth. So they will actually seek to silence all the ministries which are pointing out the sins. Let's, you see, I would like to say, my brothers and sisters, in conclusion, the general conference in the olden days used them, used to promote the truth based on God's word. But all the leading pioneers, they died. When they died, new theology was then introduced. We are now finding men like Leroy at the throne. Men who also promoted the, the, the new theology. He had gone to the, to the Babylonian schools, start books. He now read them, then he bring all those theology within until it was made officially 1981. Now we are having, we have this movement which is far more different to the, to, to the, to the original Advent movement. Which was based on the truth of God's word, preaching the, the three angels' messages. Now, the, today, you are also having uh, this logo. You know, many people, they just talk about it, the things which they have no knowledge about. You see, you are having this new logo that you are using today with the cross. And this cross is upside down. Again, this cross is actually, we know very well that from the olden times, the cross were used by the, the, by the Freemasons. And even now, they are being used by the Freemasons. So, even I'm actually defending and saying, no, we are preaching the three angels' message. You see, they already distanced themselves from the true mission. The true mission, it is now being proclaimed by those who are upholding the old theology. From 1905, 1996, they changed the log, they put this new log of new order that actually unite uh, the Adventists with the world. So they seek to be loved by the, by the world and the highly favored by the papacy, the Catholic Church. So, my friends, I would like to say this. We cannot now step off 
This is uh, from Sister White uh, and, and um, Second Selected Message, um, Volume 2, and um, page 390. She says, we, can, we cannot now step off the foundation that God has established. We cannot now enter into a new organization, for this would mean apostasy from the truth. Did they listen? No. Because if they listened, then I will ask the, the following question. If they listened, yes, is what many people are saying. They say that more. They listen. They pay attention to, to Ellen White. So if the general conference repented on their on the slaughtering of innocent babies in those in those Adventist hospitals, if they repented so far, if the general conference repented on the worship of the Trinitarian gods. Why are they not bringing back the three angels' message log? Why are they not bringing back the true present truth? You actually go around say, no, the conference, it is the church of God. The church of God, it is not the general conference. Ellen White say it very plainly that this general conference, it is no longer the voice of God. That time is past. So this general conference, in reality, it is actually the largest, uh, largest independent ministry. And um, this is not God's organization. For God's organization is com uh, comprised of all faithful individuals who are broadcasting the truth of God's word to a dying world. This is God's true organization. And these are the individuals who are on the fire for God's truth. So many of you have been lied to by your leaders, by your pastors, which, whom you are looking up to, to say that the organization, it is the general conference you have been lied to. Because this is a, a largest independent ministry, which is actually in reality, not God's organization. Read the book of uh, uh, by Ellen White, the early writings. She will, she, she will actually go to uh, you will actually face the truth head on to face the truth right into your faces. It is there in your books. The general conference is not the voice of God. Full stop. So, if anyone, any individual or a ministry, if it is not the voice of God, this means that. The devil is the minister and the leader of that ministry. So you, you need to just to think about it. And then you decide yourself. Because on your decisions, your salvation depends on it. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord help us to make things right. To come to the true knowledge of God and His Son. Which is the foundation of of our faith. This is my prayer. I pray for you. Without ceasing. That maybe one day. You may come. Your eyes may be opened. For the first time. And then you come. To the true knowledge of God. The father and his son. Through their spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly father. Who art in heaven above. We thank you. For your wonderful message, which you have given through your servant Ellen White, and today, Father, I would like to thank you that God you have used these vessels to uh, actually expound this quotation by Ellen White in the book uh, Selected Message, Volume One, on page two hundred four and two hundred five, where she speaks and gives us a warning of the changes which are going to occur in our time. So now that God, we are actually witnessing and see all this. Uh, signs in our time. Please, I pray for all my listeners, wherever they are, this audience, please, wherever they are watching from, may you, Father, richly touch their hearts and please, may you please open their eyes that they may be able to see the truth for the very first time in their lives. So, I'd like to say, my fellow uh, brothers and sisters, uh, sorry for the, uh, for, for the interruption. Um, 
I've been given a warning right here to say that uh, this um, uh, minister of mine actually it's gonna be dis dis um, disabled. I, I may not even even knowledge to to what may be the reason, but I would like to say that to many of you, if you may have some questions that you need to understand in regard to the abominations which have been done within the Adventism, please be free to uh, actually um, SMS us uh, on, in the comment box. And I believe that we will come to you and uh, with the solid answers from the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. May the Lord bless you. And when the Almighty God has blessed you, may you consider to support our ministry so that we may be able to uh, actually share more truth with our brother, brothers and sisters. You know, I would like to say that in conclusion, your help and your support is not going to make us rich, but it's going to enable us to actually keep spreading the gospel message to this dying world. May the Lord bless us until we meet again.